During this time, we have heard from experts of all sorts. We've talked to infectious disease specialists. We've talked to people that know about your hair. We want to make sure to bring you as many experts as we possibly can. And an important area I think we should talk about is functional medicine. It's something that a lot of people might not know as much about, but it certainly is a growing area and it has a lot of use, uh, particularly now, but all the time. And fortunately, I have one of the leading functional medicine experts. His name is Dr. Will Cole. He's here with us today. Dr. Will Cole, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, and Thanks for having me. For sure. First thing we do different in functional medicine than and it's done in conventional medicine. First mm -hmm. thing is that we interpret labs using a thinner reference range. A lot of people are intuitive with their health. They go to their doctor and say, hey, like I'm, I'm feeling these symptoms. Can you run the labs? And the labs come back quote unquote normal, even though the person instinctively knows like, heck, this isn't normal for me. Really what they're saying un unintentionally is you're a lot like the other people with health problems that make up the population that you're being compared to. First thing we do in functional medicine is we're comparing you to optimal health to get you there. And then second thing, we run more comprehensive labs. So we take a re really good thorough health history to look at what labs would give us the best data. So we wanna be evidence-based, look at things like underlying gut problems or toxicity or chronic infections or hormone imbalances or inflammation markers to really get a, a, a thorough perspective and get multiple labs perspectives from their vantage point, what's going on? What are the pieces to your health puzzle? Right. And then we realize we're all different. There's not a cookie cutter approach to getting healthy. And what works for one person may not work for the next person. We use food as medicine, we use natural medicines, we use medications when needed, we use right. lifestyle changes. So it's really evidence-based alternative medicine. That's the more succinct answer, but sure. I gave you my long-winded version too. <laughs> when it comes to staying home during a time like this, when you hear about the you know a virus that's wreaking havoc across the world, uh, what, what would you say is something that the average person can do uh, to make sure that they're you know as immune as possible within reason? I think that many people are motivated at this point to start taking action on the health. That's great. But mm -hmm. all of this has to remain, even when the pandemic passes, whenever that time is, people have to realize that the foundation of health has to be a lifestyle practice. This is not like take tons of supplements yes. and think you're going to be solving all your problems. For an immune system standpoint, I like largely having vegetables cooked to have them more digestible, right. breaking down. So soups and stews, you can do like a plant-based galangal broth or ginger broth or do a chicken or bone broth or something like that. Bring in acts of stillness into your life because being stressed out about all of this isn't good for your health either. So whether that's mindfulness meditation or uh, you know, having a healthy relationship with technology in general, you know, and sometimes it's not endlessly scrolling through anxiety inducing, <laughs> FOMO inducing content online. Uh, so these are all things that people can start leaning into. Obviously this is just the beginning. Sure. People need to start educating themselves on ways that they can do to, to balance their immune system. Well, thank you so much for being on with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.